We have all heard the news that the planet is dying and it's all our fault. It has been a very hot topic recently, no pun intended, and for good reason. Once known as global warming, and now as climate change, will be the focus of this video. With that being said, why exactly did the name change? Well, global warming really refers to the surface temperature of Earth. This really doesn't paint the complete picture of what is going on. Increasing sea levels, less precipitation, as well as temperature change is better encompassed by climate change. There are also those people out there where they experience a colder than normal day in summer and say, so much for global warming. It somewhat removes the urgency of what is happening. So what is happening? Basically, the human race is energy hungry. We use energy for everything, driving our cars, growing our food, watching YouTube, etc. Almost all the comforts of modern day life can be tracked back to using energy. So how do we get this energy? By burning stuff. Particularly by burning coal, oil, and gas. These are all hydrocarbons and when we burn them, they release carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Let's walk through an example. You are at home and want to make some tea. An innocent idea, right? Even good for your health. You go and turn on your kettle and it starts boiling water. Your kettle is drawing electricity through the outlet in your home. Your home is connected to a power plant through an elaborate power distribution network that I won't get into. The power plant is making that electricity by boiling water of its own and using the steam to spin a turbine. Unlike you, it can't just plug into an outlet to boil the water, it needs a different source of energy. That source is predominantly coal or natural gas. These two sources accounted for 61% of electricity generation worldwide in 2018. While natural gas does produce 45% less carbon dioxide than coal, it is still a contributor. Anyway, so to produce the energy you need for your tea, it burns some coal. Not much for your tea obviously, but of course there are more than 7 billion people on Earth and they all want tea. When coal is burned it produces by-products. Let's look at the simplified formula here. You see, coal is mostly just carbon, and when you burn it and supply oxygen, you create carbon dioxide and energy. It's this energy that gets transferred to the water, making it boil which in turn creates steam and spins a turbine. It's much like instead of using your electric kettle to boil water, you use a fire pit. Okay I know, you get it, burning coal produces carbon dioxide. Why is that bad? Well carbon dioxide acts as a giant blanket in our atmosphere. It is known as a greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gases are actually good for life on the planet. If there were none, all of the sun's energy would simply escape to space. However, too much of them and the earth gets hotter and hotter. It's like increasing your blanket's density. This is what is happening to the earth. We produce more and more carbon dioxide by burning stuff, this carbon dioxide builds in our atmosphere, and more of the sun's energy gets trapped. It should be noted that while a lot of living things exhale carbon dioxide, such as humans, this is not what the fuss is about. This pales in comparison to what we produce by industrial methods. Also, plants and trees breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen. Thus, plants and mammals form a very nice respiratory relationship. We have severely disrupted this with our burning. So, now we know how and why the Earth is warming up, so what? Most people like being warm, right? Well if anyone has ever taken a chemistry class, they learn that heat changes things, sometimes irreversibly. The Earth has certain balances that need to remain in place, and by warming it these balances get thrown out of whack. For example, if the Earth warms just 2 degrees Celsius, mountain glaciers and rivers will start to disappear and mountainous regions will see more landslides, as the permafrost that held them together melts away. By 2100, sea levels could rise by a meter, displacing 10% of the world's population. People will also die in greater numbers as they struggle with the increasing heat. If the world's temperature rises by 2 to 3 degrees, up to 40% of the Amazon rainforest will be destroyed and warmer soil will kill vegetation and release more carbon. If the world's temperature rises by 3 to 4 degrees, millions of people will begin to flee coastal areas, cities will begin to vanish and some will become islands. 
If the world's temperature increases by 6 degrees, rainforests will be deserts and massive numbers of migrants will flock to the few parts of the world they see as inhabitable, resulting in racial conflict and civil war. Many will choose places such as Canada and Siberia but even those climates may be too hot to grow food. The current consensus is that the next 10 years are critical to how warm our planet will get. It is in our hands. Climate scientists say that we must reduce current emissions to 50% of current levels by 2030, and be completely carbon neutral by 2050 to hinder human-caused climate change. That will be hard to do for sure, as not everyone even believes we have a problem. To those people I say, the potential downside to not doing anything is far greater than, perhaps, some economical reasons. Worst thing we do is clean our planet. So, I know what you're all thinking, what can we do? There are some very basic things we can start doing right now. It's all about burning less. Going back to the tea example, when making tea do you boil way too much water? This is wasting energy. Make sure to boil the amount of water you need. Are all your lights in your home LED high efficiency bulbs? No? Change them now. When I moved to our current home, the previous owner had about 60-50 watt bulbs in the fixtures. This is 3000 watts. If they were on say 5 hours a day, that would be 5475 kilowatt hours a year. Where we live this would cost us $623 and produce 3.9 metric tons of carbon dioxide. That's about what a small car produces in one year of travel. I replaced them all with super efficient 5 watt LED bulbs. This now costs us $62 to run for a year, and have cut the carbon dioxide emissions indirectly produced by our lights by 90%. Everyone should be doing this. What else can you do? Buy an electric car if you can. For example, driving a Tesla in one year, about 18,000 kilometers, produces 2.4 metric tons of carbon dioxide. This is from using the power grid to charge the battery. On the other hand, driving an average gasoline car would produce 4.6 metric tons. I know electric cars are expensive, but we must reduce our carbon emissions by 50% by 2030, so in the next 10 years make sure to trade in your gas car for an electric. Also please keep in mind, all the things I have mentioned so far not only reduce carbon emissions but save you money in the long run. There are many other things you can do, that others can sell better than me, not eating red meat as much, biking to work, planting a garden, planting a tree, recycling, and things of that sort. However, a big part of all this is where we get our power from. Governments must do a better job in this regard, and pressure from the public will help steer them in the right direction. In the end, by doing nothing we are merely destroying ourselves. The planet will recover when we are gone. We are on the brink here, and it's usually on the brink where humans do their best work. Thank you kindly for watching this episode. I hope you got a little scientized. See what I did there? I name dropped what my channel is called. Boom so clever. Anyway, if you enjoyed this content please consider doing all that stuff every other video tells you to do. Are you picking up what I am laying down? Of course, you are. Okay, have a good one.